Today we're going behind the scenes at the San Francisco International Airport. And I'll be taking you with me as we head out onto the airfield, the fireboat, and into the other secure areas to see specialized vehicles and meet the animals of the airport. And of course, this is the baggage sorting area. I'm showing you everything. This is Downey Live at SFO. I could do this all day. And this is where I legally have to tell you that this video is sponsored by the San Francisco International Airport, but trust me, it's worth it. Wow, it's nice in here. There's art everywhere here. There is a lot of art in the airport, but let's head to the new Harvey Milk Terminal 1. It's the first airport terminal in the world to ever be named after an LGBTQ plus leader. They've done a great job of sharing and continuing his life story here, but it's also the newest and most eco-friendly terminal they have. It's great if you need a quiet spot to relax. And it comes with windows that automatically tint darker blue the brighter it gets outside. It also has a number of SFO museum exhibitions that you can poke your head into. <laughs> Robot coffee shop? All right, let's see how this works. Our order's in. Oh. He's stirring it. What? Okay, that's pretty good. Thank you. I mean, this is a great terminal. I don't know if there's another way that would be more comfortable or more inviting for your arrival at San Francisco Airport. But keep your eyes open for the WAG Brigade. Hello. Hi. Who's this? This is Leah. This must be a, a dog's <laughs> dream, just to go to work and just get pets all day. These are therapy animals that you're not only allowed to pet, you're actually encouraged to pet. WAG Brigade is a group of therapy pets that wander the airport to help ease the stress and anxiety of travel. Captain Brixton. Hi, Brixton. <laughs> I don't normally smile this big at the airport. This is great. He started when he was eight months old. He's nine, and so he's been doing wow. it. I think he's the oldest one in the WAG Brigade right oh, now. Yes. And if you thought Brixton was a cool dude, wait until you meet Alex the Great. Hello. This is a 32 pound Flemish <laughs> rabbit. I think all my plans for the afternoon just got canceled. So hopefully if you're ever passing through SFO, you get to see one of these three or any of the others in the group. That's a good start. All right, what else does SFO have? And if the WAG Brigade doesn't relax you, there's a yoga room. There's actually two, but if you're craving fresh air, I'll have another spot for you. And this is the Sky Terrace. It's like an observation deck and it's open to the public. So you can come see this. You don't have to go through security come up here and have a view of the airport. Okay, we have a lot more to see tomorrow. Let's go drop our bags. Luckily, where we're staying is on the free, clean, and easy oh, air train. So we're staying at the only hotel on airport premises, the Grand Hyatt Hotel at SFO. Wow, look at the stained glass windows. This is nicer than I'm used to. Mr. Dowling, welcome home. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Living room. Dining room, kitchen, bar area. Wow, what a desk. And a bed in the middle of the room with a corner view of the airport. Holy, where's the bathroom? I mean, come on. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me though. Do you have too much? Yeah, this is more it. The same view, just not as big. You know I always do it. Oh, at the restaurant. I'm usually eating at the airport food court, let alone a restaurant with napkins. I'm not normally treated like this. The chef has sent over the crudo and half a dozen oysters. Bon appetit. I'm not used to this, but I'm starting to like it. Mapo tofu. And as I enjoyed my evening at the Quail and Crane, the sun set over the airport and I woke up to the sun rising over the fog. I slept so well, but let's go behind the scenes. Now our first stop of the day is the San Francisco Airport Commission Aviation Library and the Louis A. Turpin Aviation Museum. And the museum here takes you from the craziness of the airport back in time to a quiet 1937's recreation of the original terminal here at SFO. This is the only AAM accredited museum at an airport. And we also collect artifacts. We have over 150,000 artifacts in our That's collections. A huge number. All related to commercial aviation. Uh, so here uh, we have some records from the beginning of the airport. 
1927. The original paperwork stating yes. the rent for the airport. I understand why you hang on to this. They're yes. so vital to the, the core, the beginnings of SFO. And they're still here. That's remarkable, 100 years later. If you have time to kill between flights and you're a fan of commercial aviation or just want to learn more, this is a great stop. Now, our first behind the scenes tour this morning is at the sign shop. You see, you may not notice it, but there are a lot of signs around the airport and they all get made here. In fact, they do it all from design, printing, cutting, etching, and installing for everything from door signs, street signs, vehicle decals, and even planes. These are called wall, for wall plates. So each room has an identifier and then whoever's in that room, we, we put their logo on there. Right. So. We don't realize how many signs we see in a day as we're walking walking around. Yeah, yeah. Everything from little signs like this had to be made to large street signs. In fact, the details in place to make the airport as accessible as possible will often go unnoticed by the majority of us, but are necessary for so many. So now all signs include braille, but also raised lettering in case you had recently been in an accident and can't read braille. And they all have to be mounted five foot to center, person is sitting in a wheelchair. Mm. And they kind of measure yeah. like this or they So you have to make signage that works for everybody. everybody. Yes. Yeah. Now, here's the real secret. So this is 24 karat gold? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. You see, the sign department does more than just make the signs. They actually get to help design them, like the fireboat. Like I added the, I like the old school logo, so I added the old school logo and I, and I sort of the placement, I, we got to do it ourselves where, where everything went. So. How, how cool is it seeing your work when you're out and about? It's cool. One thing about this place, I mean, it's a science shop, but we get to do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. Watching um, news reports yeah. uh, and movies. And I'll be, hey, honey, look, I did that sign. <laughs> <laughs> now we're heading into our first highly secure area of the day. Welcome to the auto shop. John here is in charge of all the airport owned vehicles, which even include police vehicles. Specific to the airport would be the large ARF truck. They are only on airports. They're not street legal. It's all wheel drive. So there's How many wheels? Eight, eight wheels. Holy. <laughs> Tires are very expensive. They last about a year. You know, we don't have fires that often, Right. Uh, but there's a lot of training the fire department takes on these. So. Holy cow. This is the biggest cab I've ever been in. And so are the joysticks for the water cannon? Yes. Water One cannon. joystick does the, the top high reach extendable turret. Yeah. And then we got the cannon on the front for the other joystick. I have to ask, you might not be able to tell me, but do you know how much this costs? Two million dollars. That's good. I won't <laughs> touch it again. That's all. Yeah, and then we have parking enforcement vehicles. That's right. <laughs> and since these impressive vehicles aren't street legal and can only be driven at the airport, there is a simulator in the fire station to safely practice and train on without putting any equipment or people at risk and without causing flight disruptions at the airport either. So these are different simulations you can choose from. Yes, we've created them. So let's let Melissa do it, but uh, let's put her at night and maybe in the fog or... <laughs> Accidents aren't very common at airports, but it's important to have a highly trained crew ready to respond at any time and the right equipment for the job. Oh, way to go! <laughs> this is cool. All right. And so there's one more impressive piece of firefighting equipment we have to go see. Now, one of the things about being an airport that's on the water is they need to make sure they have rescue vehicles for both land and water. So they have a fireboat. I found the jet skis. Um, I was prepared to go out on the jet skis. You're just ready all the time. Not always in the wetsuit, no. but the fire department here at the airport, always ready for anything, whether it's on land or water. We're working with a lot of government agencies and whether it's PD, Coast Guard, uh, Homeland Security, to be on the front lines. Well, we saw where this was put on. This is that 15 karat gold. It has enough life rafts on board to have the ability to rescue up to 600 people, which makes it capable of rescuing passengers from multiple planes, you know, if that were needed. This boat also has all the communications. So we have all of our fire communications here. Yep. And we have all of our Coast Guard communications up here. So The shallow hull and jet engine system make it a fast responder but also able to operate in shallow water. And the reason that this boat is potentially so important out here at SFO is that the two runways stick out into the bay. And so we're just gonna go out there and practice putting the boat in between the runways here, you know, just to ensure it could in case of an emergency. This is the, uh, this is the end of the runway. These are the runway lights right here. Yeah, I think the fireboat works. In fact, they let me drive, so I know it works. 
Now that we've been to the end of the runway out on the water, well, we've actually been invited onto it by Airside Operations with Wes here. Hello. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'm Michael. Hey, Wes. Hey, Wes. Nice to meet you. I heard we're going to a little spot, uh, field lighting one, kind of uh, midfield, I guess. Great. Take us. Great. All right. Where Sounds you good. Take us. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, Airside Operations is uh, we're responsible for the safety and security of the airfield to pr provide and maintain a. Uh, safe and secure area for aircraft to depart and land. Yeah, that's the taxiway right there, and that's the runway. Yeah, every day is a little bit different than the day before. Something as simple as picking up a potentially disastrous FOD off the uh, runway or taxiways, or it could be working um, with the Secret Service and other uh, departments to secure the arrival of any VIPs that may come to the airport. Great. Uh, wow, you summed it up really well. What oh, you cool. Do? It's just right off the top of my head. I didn't rehearse that. You're natural. <laughs> now, I always thought this would be a fantastic job. So let me see if I can do it. This is a lifelong dream come true. So SFO has four runways, two going in this direction and two going in this direction. So they can have two planes taking off simultaneously and two planes landing together at a time. Uh, it's a pretty cool system. That's SFO, and this is a KLM 777-200 landing. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to think I might get too easily distracted out here and maybe I'm better to leave it in the capable hands of Wes. Well, I guess the question is now, if we've been to the end of the runway, what tops this? So the last place for us to go see is where your luggage goes. Back here at Harvey Milk Terminal 1, they have a brand new state-of-the-art luggage system, and it's very secure. It actually requires a pass scan and a fingerprint scan just to get in. So your bag goes onto the conveyor belt through the curtain and ends up, well, down here, where it goes through a TSA scan to ensure your bag is safe to be put on board the plane. The system is so much more modern and quieter than I expected. Once it passes the scan, it follows the conveyor belt to the sorting area. Next, your luggage has its tag scanned, and then it's put into a tote that can be fully tracked throughout the rest of the system. There's actually RFID chips in every single tote, so that way we can track wherever that bag goes and if it needs to go somewhere else, we can sort it that way. And the other thing I notice is that the whole machine is off until something goes by. So it's a very energy efficient system that the wheels are only turning and all the motors are on as the bin moves along and then it goes off again. Ooh, that one's going off for inspection. Actually, that tote is more important than you think. So let's quickly go to the control room and we'll come back to see the rest of the bag's journey. VHS control. Also, remember, we know where the sign was made. Wow. This is a lot more than I expected, Adriana. Yes. This is like mission control for NASA in here. <laughs> SFO is the first airport in the United States to install this tote-based independent carrier system for checked baggage, which now gives it 100% tracking and traceability. You can zoom in and see the whole system. Wow. Now that your luggage is dropped into the tote bin, it is being tracked the entire time. And if any point during its journey, it needs to be rerouted, well, they can do that from here. Wow, so all this time, I put my bag on, I go, it's got the tags, I trust it will get there, but thought it was people sorting it or whatnot, and you're just in here watching it in virtual reality go through the system. Now, back to your luggage. You see, now that it's in the tracking bin, it gets taken along the system of conveyor belts to its final gate destination, where it's then slid out of the tote and down onto the carousel. And so once it's down on the carousel, it gets put in the cart, brought out to the plane. And 500. 1,500 bins, totes. Totes. These. The actual white ones. Oh, the white, white ones. ones. Oh, special ones. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. If they're writing, will you marry me, the first the first letters will be faded by the time you're finishing the sentence. Wow. Oh. I, I think it's gonna spell wow. Could, could be mom. Now, there's only one way to end this video. You can't come to San Francisco without coming to a Giants game. There he is. Oh, well, hey. How's it going? All right, how's, how's it going, Alex? Ready for the game? Alex uh, gets some attention here, doesn't he? <laughs>
<laughs> no better way to end the day than a baseball game with Alex the Great again. I'm Mike, I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. Thanks for watching Downey Live at SFO. Say bye, Alex.